Here's a slightly silly but very intuitive way to think about p-values and statistical significance. Imagine that you have a friend and he tells you that you know absolutely nothing about football. Now your feelings are deeply hurt and you set out to prove him wrong. So for the next match day you make a prediction. You post to Facebook, I say team A will win. And then match day comes and team A does win. Now you run around and tell all your friends, I'm a football expert, I've made the right prediction. Now your friends will probably say two things, and the first will be something like, please stop running around, you're being really annoying. But the second will be something along these lines. Well, no, we are really not convinced, because even if you have no clue what you're talking about, you'd still have a 50-50 chance of predicting this one match right, so we are not convinced. But still, your friends will want to be fair. So they'll probably acknowledge that they don't necessarily agree with this mean guy who said that you don't know anything. It's just that they can't tell yet. And this is actually surprisingly similar to what a statistician would say. The first thing is the mean guy's statement that you don't have any clue about football. And that's what a statistician would call a null hypothesis, oftentimes abbreviated as H0. And in this case it would be that your predictions are random events with a 50% success probability, meaning that your predictions are as bad as tossing a coin. And obviously that's what you'd like to disprove. You want to show that your predictions are more accurate than just random coin flips. In statistics, the null hypothesis is always like that. It's always the kind of mean guy's statement which you'd like to prove wrong. And then you made your prediction and it turned out to be right. And this is what a statistician would call the data set. Well, in this case it's only one data point because you only made one prediction, but it's still all the data we have. And then your friend said, well, even if you don't have a clue what you're talking about, then you still had a 50-50 chance of getting this one prediction right. And a statistician would say, under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true, meaning under the assumption that you don't have a clue, the probability of getting a result that's at least as good as the one you have, namely that you got this one out of one prediction right, would be 50%. And the statistician would call this the p-value. And then your friends concluded that they are really not convinced. And the statistician would say, well, your result is not statistically significant because the p-value is too large. And then in the very end, your friends were being fair and told you that just because you didn't convince them by this one prediction, they don't necessarily believe this mean guy yet who said that you don't know anything about football at all. And a statistician would say pretty much the same thing. While your results are non-significant, so they are not convincing, that doesn't make the null hypothesis true either. In other words, that doesn't show that you're clueless yet either. We just can't tell yet. And of course the big question is how convincing is convincing enough? What do you have to do to make your friends believe that you actually do know something at least about football? Do you have to make 5 predictions and get all of them right? Or do you have to make 8 predictions and get 7 out of them right? A statistician would answer this via the p-value. Remember that the p-value is basically a fool's luck. How likely is a person who doesn't have a clue to make a prediction that's as good as yours? And then the question is, how much fool's luck is too much? How unlikely does a fool have to be to make this kind of prediction before your friends will conclude that you're not being a fool? In science, by convention, that threshold is 5%, meaning your result should be so good that a fool wouldn't even have a chance of 5%, that's a chance of 1 in 20, to get it. So if you reach a p-value that's smaller than 5%, most people will agree that that's a statistically significant result. Let's look at a few examples that manage to do that. Imagine that you made 5 predictions and all of them were right. Well, what's the p-value of that? If it's true that you don't have a clue, so that you just have a 50-50 chance of getting each game right, well, your chances of getting 5 games right would be 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. That is 0 0.03125, so round about 3%. And this is a pretty low statistically significant p-value. Now let's look at the case where you got 7 out of 8 games right. If for each match you just have a 50-50 chance of predicting the correct result, then your chances of getting at least 7 out of 8 right is this, the chances that you get 8 predictions right, plus the chances that you get 7 predictions right. And we have to put in the times 8 here because there's 8 different positions where the wrong prediction might occur. So you might predict the first game wrong, or the second, or the third, and so on. And you can see that this sum comes out at around 3.5%. So this result too is statistically significant. 
In other words, if you were to be a complete football fool, your chances of getting at least 7 out of these 8 predictions right would be less than 5%, that's less than 1 in 20. And that's the kind of result that probably would convince your friends, but also a statistician. Now one thing you can't do is try again each match day. So imagine that on three different match days you make predictions for eight different games each and most of the time you're horribly off. But then this one time you get seven out of eight right and now you walk around and tell everybody that this proves that you're a football expert. Now that doesn't work because you just cherry picked the one time that you got lucky. To make it convincing you'll have to announce how many predictions you make, take a shot at them and get enough right that your result is statistically significant.